Okay, next we're going to talk about the Pulsar. Now, as you might recall, the Pulsar is an all-purpose tool. It's really a cool thing. Uh, you won't see it anywhere else in anything um, until certainly modern times. But in 73 or 83 or 93, I mean, it's anyway. So the Pulsar is a combination of things. First of all, it is the clock that drives the sequencer. Second of all, it's a great modulation source, a sawtooth shaped modulation source that you can direct anywhere. And lastly, it is a sawtooth shaped envelope, uh, a very super basic, uh, I guess you just, you wouldn't even call it an attack decay. You would just say it's a decay envelope because it just has a decay because it's sawtooth shaped. And you have heard me using that as an envelope to control the one of the channels of the dual low pass gate, which is really cool. So it is it's a little gold mine. It's the smallest module on here, and yet it is very powerful. Let's take a look at some of its functionality, shall we? Good. Okay. So first, like I've said, um, there are different ways. This is true for the pulsar, the envelope generator, and the sequencer. Well, and even the random voltage you have routing options at the top. Right now we have it set to keyboard. So whenever I hit the keyboard, whether I'm controlling it from the Buchla inputs on the top here, or the volt per octave and gate inputs in the back, which is what I'm using with this MicroFreak, or MIDI, the, uh, the, the gate that you get from those sources will trigger the pulsar when you have it set to keyboard. If you switch it to self, nothing happens. And you're like, what? What's going on here? Um, well, basically, you want to start looping it because when it acts as an LFO, it's because it is repeating. It is looping. And the way you get it to start looping, super easy. You just press this button. Now, if we used it to control something, it is a sawtooth modulation source. So let's uh, get a really clear indication of this by, say, plugging it into the pitch of the complex oscillator. Okay, you ready? Okay, so if you're saying, well, yeah, that's cool, but can it go slower? Yes, it can. You just bring the period down. And yes, it goes fast enough that it goes into the audio range, which is cool. And so that's just going to do its thing at the speed you set it to, no matter where you direct it. Uh, of course, you could direct it to um, an amp if you wanted to. So now it's controlling uh, gate two, at which we're hearing the modulation oscillator in the audio range coming in. And the thing you just saw me doing, uh, you could uh, do that yourself if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to do something you don't know how to do yet <laughs> to do it. But if you wanted to control, if you wanted to vary the speed of this over time, this is how you do it. Here, instead of that, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to use Oh, I don't need to use that. I can just do this. Okay, I'm going to direct this into gate 1. So now the pulsar is controlling gate 1, and as it loops through its pulse, it re-triggers gate 1. Now, what if you wanted to vary the speed of that wave? You could do it this way. Which 
is cool. Or you could do something different like switch your modulation oscillator into low mode, bring the frequency down, choose the triangle wave, and plug it into the pulsar input. And then you'll get unique rhythms as the wave shape present coming out of the modulation oscillator interacts with the wave shape that's happening in the repeating pulsar. You basically have two periodic waves that are interacting. Of course, as you increase that voltage, you're gonna get different outcomes. But if you keep it low, you can get different rhythms. So that is cool. Okay, so that is us using the self function of the pulsar uh, to uh, modulate and then actually speed it, adjusting the speed of the period with a modulation source. Um, we also, if you uh, switch this to sequencer, it will be controlled by the sequencer, which is weird because the sequencer can be set to be controlled by it. So that creates some really interesting outcomes. Uh, but we'll probably get to that when we get to the sequencer, because there's no point in talking about the sequencer controlling the pulsar when we haven't talked about the sequencer yet. Now, you might say, if we were talking about the sequencer, if we were talking about the pulsar, it might be good to show that the pulsar controls the sequencer, which I just have done. As you can see, the sequencer is going because the pulsar is in self mode and it's repeating. And with each of the pulses it repeats, it advances the sequencer a step. So that's what we're seeing here. And of course, if you want to control the speed, you would just increase the period. So that's cool. Okay, now let's switch it back to keyboard. And I just want to talk about this button. This was the button we used to activate the self repeating function, the self looping of the pulsar. You can also use it just as a, a one off pulse to say, uh, open a gate. Now we're in low. Or to trigger anything else that you have it modulating. So that's cool. Uh, each time we've heard it, especially when we were using it as a an envelope, as we're doing right now, we had it in sustained mode, which means when you hold down a key, which you can't see I'm doing, that will hold the pulsar at what I imagine to be its starting point, which is the high point of that sawtooth wave. And as you hold it, it holds that voltage so that you can do sustained things like I just did. Now, if you switch it to trans, that means transient and it uh, does not sustain. It is then controlled entirely by the period. The longer the period, the longer uh, the sound continues. Basically, your decay is dependent on the period of the sawtooth wave shape as it goes through that shape. So it's just like using decay without sustain on an envelope generator. So that is cool. Also, you can switch the thing off or to external. I have not experienced, experimented with external. I'm pretty sure that's a MIDI functionality, but uh, I'm not sure because there aren't inputs for it other than, you know. Anyway, so that is our pulsar. 
that is how it works and that's how you can use it. Um, it is incredibly easy to operate and immediate to operate and helpful when you want envelopes or LFOs or you want to control the speed of the sequencer. I should also point out that it can control the sampling that takes place in the random voltage, which isn't actually sampling, but that's another story to talk about when we talk about the random voltage. But anyhow, the pulser can also control how often there is a faux sampling that takes place in the sample and hold, the faux sample and hold in the random voltage. We'll talk about that later. Anyhow, that is the pulser. <laughs> 